What's up boys and girls and welcome back to another Black Desert Online video. Starting out in this game can be a little bit rough as there is so much that you need to learn and it's very easy to miss quite a few things that will make your playing experience much more fun. With that in mind, I decided to compile a list of the top 10 things that you should know before playing. Hopefully, knowing about these things will help you get off to a much better start in the game. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Coming in at number 10 is the mob knowledge system. I remember when I first started playing, I thought that the mobs were bugged as their HP bar was not decreasing as I actually attacked them. But then I realised, you need to kill a certain amount of the mobs that you are already killing before you learn about them. You will be rewarded with knowledge on them between rank C and S. Depending on the rank you get, you'll do more damage to them and S rank also gives you better loot. But the main thing that I wish I knew about this system is that your rank on a mob never increases no matter how many you kill. If you are unhappy with your rank, then you need to speak to an NPC who can reset your knowledge in Kalfian. The NPC is called Anolisa, and she is located in the library of Kalfian. To reset your knowledge, go speak to her, spend some energy, and then select the mob type that you want to reset. After you've done this, it's time to go back to killing that mob, and hoping that this time you will get a higher rank. It's not really worth resetting mob ranks as you level, because you won't kill these again after you outlevel them. So I suggest saving this system until you're around level 50 and you start grinding a specific set of mobs for an extended period of time. Next up at number 9 are boss scrolls and world bosses. You should always try to kill these bosses on spawn as they drop some rare loot and are also good for making some quick money. Black Desert has a couple world bosses that should be out at release and they are Zaka and the Harpy Queen. They both have different spawn timers so the best way to look out for them is via the world announcement that will appear on your screen when they spawn. I don't know what the exact phrasing of this will be when it comes out, but just make sure that you have world notifications turned on so that you don't miss it. They are open world, so anyone can get involved as long as you turn up before they die, you will get some loot. The second type of bosses are boss scrolls. These are summoned via scrolls, which you can either get from a black spirit daily quest at level 50 or through the mileage store. The best way to do these is with a group of five other people that also have these scrolls as they will help you to maximize the amount of money you get from them. They also have a chance to drop some rare loot, and if you complete the daily quest, then you get a little loot crate which will also give you some additional items. All in all, try to start doing these as soon as possible because they are a good source of income and a lot of fun. There are also guild bosses which can be summoned by your guild, which are a lot tougher than the normal daily boss scroll. But the drop rate is increased, so you get better loot. So that is just one reason why you should join a guild. Once your guild is up and running, killing these bosses should be a regular occurrence in order to maximize your gameplay efficiency. At number 8 is the marketplace prices. I could not figure out why some of the items displayed min and max prices on them. At first I thought that you could sell them to different vendors for different prices, and then I thought that you could get more money off vendors if you did the conversation game and gained amenity. Finally, I realized that the min and max prices are for the marketplace. In this game, prices are controlled so you can't sell things for ridiculous prices. These min and max prices are displayed on the item are quite simply the lowest and the highest price that you can list them for on the marketplace for other users to buy. I'd suggest checking the prices of the item before you sell them to vendors because certain items can have a weirdly high price on the marketplace as they are used for something in crafting. So check it out to make sure you get the most money possible out of it. Coming in at number 7 is character inventory space and weight limit. The inventory space is pretty simple. There are multiple quests that you complete in the game in order to increase your inventory space by one or two slots at a time. The quests are scattered around the game world, so if you're looking to do them quickly, then I suggest looking up a guide for them on Google. There are a couple decent ones out there for this, and they aren't hard to find. You start with barely any inventory space, so I really suggest doing this on your first character as it will help you out immensely. The weight limit really confused me when I first started playing. In this game, your character has a weight limit. Everything in this game has weight. Items, money, armor, and weapons. So you need to put stuff like money into storage or it'll weigh you down and actually slow down your character's movement speed. If you want to increase your limit, there are a couple things you can do. First off would be to level your strength. You can do this by having a trade crate in your inventory and walking around with it until you level it up. And the second way is by wearing certain types of armor. Some belts increase your weight limit, and the Hercules armor set gives you a nice plus maximum weight, but this set doesn't give any good stats besides that, really. The last thing that you can do if you really don't want to quest or AFK level with a trade crate is to simply go to the cash shop, open up your credit card, and buy the extra inventory slots. 
I doubt they'll cost very much, so I'll probably end up buying myself a few at launch anyway. At number six is talking to NPCs. Seriously, speak to every NPC around you. If they have an exclamation mark above their head, it means they have some form of knowledge to offer you. This could be a huge variety of things, but it's important to do this because it will help to increase your maximum energy. Every time you learn a new piece of knowledge, you will gain energy XP, so it's a very worthwhile time investment to do this. I wish I knew this at the start of playing the game, because afterwards I had to go back and talk to so many NPCs that I had just straight up missed because I made a dash for max level. Some of these NPCs even offer you useful quests which reward you with combat points and even inventory space. Another reason why you should do this is that when you talk to an NPC and gain knowledge, this will allow you to start conversations with other NPCs that you can gain some cool rewards from, like special quests, shop items, and more. At number 5, we have probably the most asked question on BDO, and that is, where can I get a horse, man? This is pretty much the first thing that I wanted to do when I started playing the game, and the idea of actually being able to go out into the wild and tame a horse is amazing. If you don't want to go and tame a horse yourself, then you can buy one from a stable manager, but it will be a very slow tier 1 horse, but hey, it will get you around for the time being. If you do want to tame your own horse, then I suggest watching my guide about it, as it's a bit long for me to explain on this video. Horses in this game lose stamina as they run around, so you need to either get them more stamina from feeding them carrots, which you can buy from a stable manager or even grow them yourself, and you can also fully recover their stamina by going to a stable manager, selecting your horse, and clicking recover. It doesn't cost very much silver to do this, and a horse with no stamina is pretty useless and very slow. Next up at number 4 is using your AFK time wisely. If you have the option to leave your computer on whilst you go out to the shops or do something in real life, or even whilst you sleep, then there are a world of possibilities which you could be doing to improve your character massively. Things like fishing, processing, and AFK horse leveling are some of the great ways for you to make money. You could also level up your stamina and strength with autopathing if we actually get it on NAEU. But just keep in mind that there is always something that you can be doing whilst AFK. So please don't do that thing that I did when I started playing, which is just AFK in Heidel or any other town. It's not a good use of your time. If you want any more information on things to do whilst AFK, then go check out my guide about it. Hopefully that will explain it in more detail and help you decide that you want to do to maximize your time online. For number three, this was my personal damn man, that is a cool feature moment in this game. And that is when I discovered that Geared is not locked to a character and it has no level requirement. I remember leveling my character to level 50 and decided that I didn't really enjoy playing Blader very much. But the idea of having to get a whole new armor set was really putting me off re-leveling a new tune. But then someone mentioned that gear was shareable and that was absolutely amazing to me. All you have to do is take off your character's gear, put it in storage and then switch character and go and collect the gear from whichever storage that you just deposited in. After that, the only thing you need to worry about is getting a new weapon. And the fact that items don't have a level requirement in this game means that when you're low level, you pretty much can't die. And if you have a good weapon, then you're gonna shred through mobs like a hot knife through butter. It's a lot of fun and it makes leveling a hell of a lot quicker. Just missing out on the number one spot and coming in at number two are spending your skill points. I messed this up badly on my first character. I didn't realize that as you level up and get more skill points, they become slower and slower to obtain in this game. And ultimately, they grind to nearly a complete halt at high levels. So the thing I wanted to tell you guys to do is actually think about where you're spending your skill points. Don't just randomly dump them into an ability because you think it looks cool. This is exactly what I did and I regretted it later on. There are multiple class build guides out on the internet and doing a little research really can go a long way. To maximize the amount of skill points that you get in this game, be sure to do any quests which actually reward skill points. This will give you a good boost, especially if you save them for later in the game as skill points become harder to obtain. If you have messed up with your skill points, then you can reset them with a partial skill reset, but this does cost money off of the cash shop. So this is why I'm telling you about it now to save you some money later on. So, that means, coming in at number one in this video is the questing system in this game. I've mentioned this in another video before, 
because I really didn't read the quest rewards when I started playing and I found myself wasting a hell of a lot of time doing random and sometimes pointless quest because I thought, hey, at least they give me more XP. Oh, how I was wrong. In Black Desert, most quests give you contribution XP or skill XP. This means that they will help you gain more contribution, which is used as a form of currency to purchase things like houses or to invest in nodes or worker spots. And skill XP will give you more skill points. Now, I'm not saying that these are useless and not worth doing, but I assumed that from doing quests, it was going to be the fastest way to level my character. But it turns out that if you are trying to speed level in this game, then you are better off just grinding. I would like to point out that I really do recommend doing quests for the first time you level as they help to teach you certain aspects of the game and allow you to gain your initial contribution points in order to start your node system if that's something that you're interested in. So that's it for this top 10 guys. I hope that this video has helped you learn a few more things about the game. I tried to cram in as much useful stuff as I could in a short amount of time. If you've got any more tips for new players, then please feel free to drop them in the comment section below. There are so many things in this game, so I'm sure we would all appreciate to hear about them. If you guys have enjoyed this video, then please do like and subscribe for more content, as I'll be trying to get out a lot more guides in the very near future. But until next time, guys, take it easy and peace out.